Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 7. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 7. The Word of God says that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us Amen. through Christ Jesus. Amen. Father, bless this holy book now tonight, Lord. Give me unction to preach it, Father. Have me say what you want me to say. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. And for just a moment tonight, if you allow your mind, your soul, and your spirit to travel into the future, imagine somewhere like a million or two million or three million years from now into the future what it's going to be like. In the book of Revelation chapter number 21 and verse number 27, it says this, And there shall be in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. No sin, folks. No sin. No sin. I've known it all my life. Can't get away from it. It's here all over the place. But my friend, the time is coming when you're going to a land where there is no sin. Hallelujah to God. Don't have to lock your doors. Don't have to look behind your back. Don't have to worry about somebody stealing your identity. Nobody won't have to worry about somebody coming up and killing you, shooting you, whatever. There is no sin. That's what God has in store for his people. In the book of Revelation, chapter number 22 and verse 5, the Bible said, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. There will be no darkness there. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. The Apostle Paul says, Dwelling in the light which no man can see, which no man hath seen, to whom be power and glory forever and ever. Amen. We're talking about a light that your eyes have never seen. We're talking about a light that is incomprehensible to a human being or any creature whatsoever, except God allows you to see that light. I'm going to see that light. A light that is stronger and greater than the sun, a light that is pure, emanating forth from the almighty, eternal, absolute God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We'll see him as he is. You talk about a privilege beyond imagination. That's the heritage of the saints. I want to see that light. I want to see it. These mortal eyes cannot see it. It's impossible. There's no way that you could even see God if he didn't want you to see him. He would have to manifest himself to where your senses were capable of comprehending his presence. He would have. He'd have to make himself known to you in such a way that these two eyes and all that makes up this human flesh could be conscious of his presence. But the day is coming when my flesh will not be there. But I'll be conscious of his presence and I'll see him as he is. In the book of Revelation, chapter number 21 and verse number 4, the Bible says this, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. No death. Can you imagine life without death? Can you imagine never, ever, ever, ever be worrying about being separated from one of your loved ones? There are no graveyards in heaven. There's no graveyards up there. There's no funeral parlors in heaven. There's no funeral processions in heaven. You won't find a tombstone or a casket anywhere in the place. It's the land of the living. Hallelujah to God. Born of the spirit of the living God. He said, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. That's what he's talking about. That's what's ours. If you don't know the Lord, you'll have eternal death. But for those of us that know him tonight, it is eternal life. 1973, I was begotten by the Spirit of God to live forever. Imagine, folks, you're going to live forever. If it wasn't for God, if God Almighty wasn't the, the, when the central issue of everything, you could not handle eternal life. I wouldn't want to live forever. But if I know God and know he'll be there and know that I'll be around him and he is the source of my life, eternity will pass us like a second. It'll make no difference whatsoever to the one that for a thousand years is as a day and today is a thousand years. Amen. There is no death there. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 21 and verse number four, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. No suffering. Life without suffering. Can you imagine? Can you imagine living and there's never, you'll never have a, you'll never have a, 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 a bone ache, a, 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 a muscle ache, a, no cancer, no heart disease, no none of that. 
that the human flesh has to suffer with today. Imagine that. Imagine that. You know why you suffer now? You know why you all the sickness around us? You know why we're getting such debilitating uh, situation? Because of the fall of man. In the book of Romans chapter number 5, death by sin, death passed upon all men for all have sinned. Adam's legacy for you tonight is sorrow and suffering and death and dying and crying. But the legacy of the Lord Jesus Christ is life eternal. No suffering and no death. No dying. Hallelujah to God. Think about it. A million years from now, this world will be but, but a faint memory. But you'll look off into eternity for the one that died for you and the one who came into this world and gave you life. So, life without suffering. In Revelation chapter number 22 and verse number 3, we read these words. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. The curse, the curse is everywhere. Right now there's a virus growing in this country that's called Ebola. That Ebola virus is killing people. Over a hundred people are infected with it in the United States that they know of. Originally they took a cavalier attitude toward it. We're such, we have such great medical facilities. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. But the bottom line is it's caught them off guard. The bottom line is that the, that, the, that hospital in Dallas, Texas was ill prepared to deal with the case of Ebola. Communication lines were broken. The man with Ebola came there to the emergency room. And by the way, if you don't know this tonight, Ebola is about 60 to 70 to 80 percent fatal for everyone who contracts this thing, this virus. He came to the emergency room. They did what they did at the emergency room. He had all the symptoms, came from Liberia, had just come from Liberia. They sent him home. He went back to the, to the hotel motel they were staying at. Children were involved in this thing. They were in that room. Children in that room were exposed to the Ebola virus. These very children in that room wound up going back to the school, to the children that live in Dallas, Texas, in whatever school they go to. <coughs> they wound up going back to that school. If I were a parent of a child in that school, I would be horrified that it was ever allowed to happen. But the bottom line is he, went, he wound up going back to the hospital because his condition worsened. And now he's in critical condition. The last I heard a few hours ago, he's still alive, but he may very well die. What is Ebola, preacher? It's a curse. The Bible said before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, plagues pestilences and I'm seeing them like we've never seen them before. They're coming from every direction. It's a horrid situation out there in that world. Get ready. Get ready. Lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah to God. He's not coming back to heal this world. He's coming back to take us out of this world. This world has rejected him. It's under a curse. In 1973, I said, Lord Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner, and come into my heart and save my soul. At that very moment, the curse was lifted from me, that I was no longer under condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That all changed. Hallelujah to God. A million years from now, there will be no curse. In 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 and verse number 16, verses 16 through 18, we read these words. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Words of comfort for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hate to see loved ones leave this world. I've had my heart broken more than one time to have a loved one ripped out of my family. By the time I was a teenager, I was 17 years old. I'd already lost my daddy. I'd lost my, my, most of my family members. By the time I got married, everybody in my family was gone but my mother. And she died in 1980. That was 34 years ago. 
She passed this world and left it. So my mother's gone. My father was gone. My grandfather was gone. My grandmother was gone. My grandfather and grandmother on the other side. All of my immediate family, every last one of them was gone from the face of this earth. And I was still a young man. All of my family was gone. The separation had taken place. Had the death angel had come into my home and taken my loved ones away from me. I've got a reunion day coming. Amen. I've got a day coming when I intend to see those that have been taken on before me. Hallelujah to God. A million years from now, there'll be no separation. Thanks be unto God. You'll love them and love them forever and never have to give them up and know that the death angel will never come in. There'll never be that empty seat at the table and the pictures that you look at that you've got scattered throughout the house of one that who had been there that you'd loved in this world, but they're not in this world anymore. That's what this world has to offer you. If you put your hope in this world, your hope is in shifting sand. If your life is tied up with this place and this is the only joy and hope that you'll ever have, you've got no joy and hope. My hope is in the blessed hope of our glorious Savior and our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming again. Hallelujah to God. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. John on the Isle of Patmos said it. I say it too. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. We're not going to convert the world. The world's converting the church. So come, Lord. Even so, come. In the book of 1 John, chapter number 3 and verse number 2, we read these words. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Put emphasis on that. We shall be like him. And John says, beloved, it doth not yet appear what we shall be. So don't let anybody flim flam you and tell you what it's going to be like in your, in your, in your essence when you come into the presence of God. Because we don't know, but we do know this. We're going to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our archegos. He's our, he's our, he's the pioneer. He's the chief captain of our salvation. He's the one who's gone on before us, blazed the trail, opened the doors and made the way possible into the presence of God. He's that last man, second Adam. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be unto God. The day is going to come when he will personally carry you into the presence of almighty God. Only he can do that. He's the only one that can do that. When God appears to Michael, Gabriel, all the, and any, if there are other archangels, scripture doesn't mention them, but Michael and Gabriel and all the angels, when God appears to them, he chooses to appear to them where they are in their element as creatures made by the hand of God. But the Lord Jesus Christ is going to take us into the very presence of God himself. And you talk about a blessing and a privilege. That's beyond, that's, that's beyond the wildest, wildest dream in my mind. As D.L. Moody said that he's, as he was leaving this world, he said, heaven is open and is opening before me and the earth is receiving. And my goodness, he looked straight up into the heavens and he looked there with joy and power and victory and he was carried up to meet the Lord and his body fell back to the earth. And that's the way to leave. If I could choose how to leave out of here, that's the best way to go. Is just say, here he comes. He's opened up heaven like he took up Elijah, like he took Enoch. My goodness, friend, what more could you ask for than for the Lord to take you from this body of sin and death, this sorrowing, dying body? And it is. It is a mortal frame. From dust it came and to dust it shall return. You say, well, I want to live 200 years. You wouldn't look at yourself if you did. You wouldn't want to live 200 years in this world. Imagine, imagine what Adam would look like if he were still alive. Good night, this world takes a toll on the body. Amen. Amen. But that which is born again, born of the Spirit of God, is eternal and will never age. Amen. We're going to a land that is fairer than day. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 5, the Word of God says, in Ephesians 5 and verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word. Now watch this. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. My, what he is doing. He's preparing his bride 
exactly the way he wants her. And then when he gets ready for, he's going to come and take her. Amen. In plainer words, if you want perfection, you're going to have perfection. Can you imagine letting the old mind, this corrupt mind, this mind, this brain that draws me back 50 years into things that I did decades ago, that haunts me and torments me. And it's the, and it's the tool of Satan to wear me down. And I've got to constantly come back to the Lord Jesus. And as I preached the other night, look at that cross where he nailed all those charges. He nailed them on the tree and then plead the blood of Christ and get the victory. The day is going to come when the memory banks are gone. There will come a time in heaven, friend, when the Bible says the memory of the wicked shall rot. What that means is that there'll come a time in heaven when if you do have some dear near to you that wind up going to the pit, they're go, they wind up going to hell, you will not spend eternity grieving over the fact that they are in hell. You won't do it. That would, re, that would, that would kill your joy to think that you can remember of a loved one. No, their memory will cease to exist. It'll all be what he's done for you, where he brought you from, and where he's taking you to. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to heaven by the grace of God. I don't want to go to hell. Anybody in their right mind would not want to go to hell. It's not a joke. And, um, and people joke about it because they try to lessen the bite. They try to take away the terror if they can just make it familiar in the sense that everybody talks about it, it's not that big a deal. That it is a big deal. He said, don't fear him that can destroy the body. Yea, I forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him that hath power to destroy both body and soul in hell. The apostle said, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far greater, far greater, far greater, far greater. Those of you that are young, you're in your, teen, your teens and your 20s and your 30s and what have you. Your body is, uh, responds, and you, you don't suffer. You don't ache for the most part, and you enjoy all your life, and that's good. Enjoy it while you can because the day will come when your body will begin to rebel, and you will begin to feel parts of your body you didn't even know existed. And you're gonna, your body is not going to cooperate, and I, I have taken reasonably good care of this body for, for the 68 years that I've been in this world, and it still came apart. And so, I mean, that's just, that's just what to expect. And so I don't have any hope in it. I know this body, it's gone, but he's going to give me a glorified body likened to his body, a body that did not come from this earth, a body that was fashioned in heaven. I have a home from heaven, and one day I'll be with the saints of God. I'll live forever, folks, forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. And they can't take it away from you. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Why wouldn't anybody tonight in your right mind when you think about what I just said to you, that it's the free gift of God, Amen. not of works, lest any man should boast. He offers to you eternal life. Yes. Not only will he forgive you of your sins, thank God, he'll cleanse you from the guilt of your sins, thank God, write your name in the book of life, and that's all wonderful. But my friend, he gives you everlasting life Amen. and the surety of that inheritance, yes. the down payment of that, the earnest it's called in the New Testament is when he gives you the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that Holy Spirit of God seals you till the day of, 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 of redemption. It is the mark of God in your soul. And every Christian, every born-again believer should know what I'm talking about when I talk about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We don't all act the same way. We don't all react the same way. Some folks get emotional. Some don't get as emotional. It's fine both ways. But the bottom line is if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, you'll know it. There is no way that that can happen without you knowing it. And the fact that someone has moved into your life and you know he's so much greater than you, you know something wonderful has happened to you, that's God saying to you, that's my proof to you that this book is true and eternity awaits you. You've got a home in heaven. The earnest of your inheritance, the down payment is the Holy Spirit. The first payment, he, the down payment in the sense that this is the beginning. You have the Holy Spirit. Now all the other awaits you. And when he takes you from this world, 
It's the world that he makes for the saints of God. Hallelujah to God. Amen. A million years from now, folks, we'll rejoice around the throne. Another million years, we'll still be rejoicing around the throne. A billion years into the future will be like a moment of yesterday. Forever and ever and ever to never die and to live the life of God. And the life of God is God's gift to you. That's yours. Would you like to have that tonight? I'm not one of the elect preacher. Listen, when he went to the cross, he went to the cross and tasted death for every man. Amen. Would have all men to be saved. Amen. Not willing that any should perish. Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. You don't know what I've done, preacher. I don't need to know what you've done. I'm just a man. I'm a creature like you. I don't need to know what you've done. I know what Christ did for you. That's all that's necessary tonight. You say, well, he won't forgive me for some of the things that I've done. He'll forgive you for anything that you do. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, will cleanse from all sin. The sin that there is no forgiveness for is the final rejection of the son of God is to refuse his salvation, is to turn away from the light. And that light is here. But listen, when the light comes on, you see clearly then you have a need. And that need is salvation. You must be born again. Amen. Father, I ask you, to, Lord, tonight to use what I've said and help someone. My Father, speak to their heart and to their soul. And if there's someone in this house that needs to be born again, I pray that this would be the night. Yes. This would be the night that they'd accept you before they walk out this door and be ready to meet you. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen.